Jesus, my doubt and comes my fear, and it my tears. The blood of Jesus rain from day to day. It's Holy Amen. It will the power that gives me strength from day to day will never lose its power. We have so far I have two prayer requests in my the ones you can see. Yeah, so I uh, would like to mention them so that we pray for them before we move on to the next session. Um Zedi, how are you? Hi, baby. I'm good. Hi, how are you? I'm fine. So I will, I will mention this prayer request and you will pray for them. Sawa. So, uh, Jacob says, please remember my father, Jacob Akwe, in your prayer. Okay. So please remember Jacob's father. Yeah, and then there's one that is written to me privately. It says, my, it is my first time here. I'm going through a pattern in my life. No matter how I change my methods, I keep falling in the same place. I'm starting to believe it is a curse. Please pray for me. I need a breakthrough. I don't want to give up. I want a different result this time. Please pray with me. This time, the blow was hard. I need peace and healing. Please let us remember uh, this soul in our prayers that God may come through for them. So Zedi, please uh, go ahead and pray for them. If you have any other... Okay, Sakev says, please pray with me. I'm not feeling well. Awaiting further tests uh, to ascertain the issue. Please remember Sakev also. You can continue sending your prayer requests as the program goes on, even as Zebi prays for us right now. Zebi. Stretch. 
Father, I stretch my hands to thee. No other help I know. If thou withdraw thyself from me, I'll whither shall I go? I do believe, I now believe that Jesus died for me and that he shed his precious blood, not seem to set me free. Zeti, Zeti Park. If not, let us humble ourselves for a word of prayer. Dear God in heaven, we humble ourselves to give thanks and to intercede on behalf of our fellow brothers and sisters. And in a special way, I come before you with the requests that have been placed forth in this platform. I pray for Mr. Jacob Akwe, he needs you he needs you dear lord you are the only one who understands in what way this come through for him and dear jesus i am praying for the silent request the private request sent uh, whoever this is dear jesus i pray that you may please be with them may you make a difference in their life may they not give up and lose hope in you but May we keep trusting in you always and for anyone else who is in this platform who needs the same intervention, dear Jesus, I pray that you may come through for them. I also remember Sakev who's not feeling well and I am asking you that you may please be with them, please be with him and give him healing in a special way. Any other person who's not feeling well, I pray that you may also stretch your healing hands upon them. May you be with us through the rest of the session. For this is my humble prayer, trusting and believing in Jesus' name. Amen. Yes, so um, we'll continue. I have realized that we, uh, our speaker is in and um, I would like us to go directly to the lesson of the day and welcome Nompilo that's why yeah i hope no i haven't said your name so wrong so no pillow is coming for to us from zimbabwe she says that she loves jesus and she is a child of god and that is true i have had her speak to us once uh, but she is a very powerful speaker I know her at a personal level more than a preacher, but I am very grateful that we are going to hear from her today. Nompilo, you're very welcome. This is your time, and may the Lord God use you in this moment. Hey, good evening, everyone. Um, good evening. Um, <laughs> hi, Dory. <laughs> I'm thankful for the opportunity to speak to you this evening. Um, this week when I was trying to finalize exactly what it was that I was going to say, I approached one of the organizers of the program and I asked her, why did you ask me to speak on this topic? Because I was hoping maybe it would help direct what I was going to talk about. Um, but she was not very helpful <laughs> at the end of the day. But um, all, the, all the same, I'm thankful for this opportunity to speak to you. And I pray that God will use me in a special way today. Um, let us pray. Heavenly Father, we come before your throne this evening. Lord, we are so grateful and so thankful for the mighty work that you've done in our lives up until today. We thank you, Lord, because you are going to speak to us this evening and we thank you because you have a special message that you want to remind us of today 
Lord, I pray that you may speak to our hearts and that you may change us, that we may become more and more like you each and every single day. Amen. So I was asked to speak about prayer this evening. And as I was thinking about what I was going to say to you this evening, I kept thinking about the song that I heard growing up that was sung by a popular group. And the song is called Living on a Prayer. Now this song has nothing, absolutely nothing to do with prayer. However, it, 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 it caught on. And so my talk this evening is entitled Living on a Prayer because I believe that as we live through life today, we need to live on a prayer. We need to live every breath that we take on a prayer. Um, when I was still in primary school, we had a subject that was entitled Re Religious and Moral Education. And I remember my first definition of prayer came from that um, lesson. And the definition was that prayer is talking to God. Simple. It was a very simple definition that I think applies even right now in our lives. Prayer is simply talking to God. It's simply opening up our hearts and emptying ourselves and presenting ourselves before God. And as I grew, I continued to see this trend where I learned how to talk to God because I was told that prayer is talking to God. So today we want to go through some of the things that we learn about prayer, some of the things that we can exercise in our prayer that will make us more effective as we pray, that will make us more understanding of the God that we are praying to as well. Our key text this evening is Psalm 46 verse 10. Now I'm sure I am speaking to young Christian people um, who have probably memorized this verse by heart and the verse says, be still and know that I am God. We grew up sharing this verse with our friends. We grew up memorizing this verse in front of our churches and um, when asked to share a memory text that, that touches your heart, it's very easy to, to just memorize this when you say, be still and know that I am God. But I want us to use the message version today. And the message version says, step out of traffic, take a long loving look at me. That's the, that's the version that I want us to look at this evening. Step out of traffic and take a long loving look at me. Now, I know some of you come from countries where it takes you maybe at least two hours to get to work because you are stuck in traffic. Traffic just won't move. It takes such a long time and, and you spend so much time of your day stuck in traffic, stuck around cars that are moving and everyone is going to and from work. Everyone is going somewhere. But God is saying, stop what you're doing. Stop everything. Stop it and just focus on me. Look lovingly upon me. Now that's the theme of our talk this evening. Be still and know that I am God. Um, a few years back, I, I went through something that changed a lot of things that were happening in my life. Now I, I had a plan. And I'm sure a lot of us have plans in our lives. I had a plan that I had in my life. And I said, okay, by this time, I will be doing this and that and that. And it was all laid out. And all of a sudden, that plan came crumbling down. And all of a sudden, I didn't have a plan. I was so upset. <laughs> because it took a long time to build up this plan. You know, it was meticulously placed. And it wasn't a plan that I had just said, you know what, this is what I'm going to do. It was a plan that I had prayed about and I said, Lord, this is my plan. I'm giving it to you. And this is what I want to do with my life. Please help me achieve this. And when the plan fell apart, I was so disappointed. And in my language, I was, I was asking my family members for, for, 
a, a word in English that would describe this. In my language, it's kuramwa. And in Debele, they say ukalala. It's when you just decide, you know what? Ah, I found the English word. I felt resigned. And I resigned myself to the fact that God, this is your life. I gave it to you, so it's up to you. Do what you want to do. I'm done. And I, I literally just gave up. And my reasons for doing that were, Lord, I planned this. Like, if you wanted to show me earlier on that this was not the plan, you should have done it. Why wait until the last moment to show me that this is not the plan? And so all of a sudden, I didn't have a plan. And my prayer was, Lord, I don't know what next, but it's up to you. I'm done. Do what you want. Now, now God is funny because I, I think God has a sense of humor because he, something that I learned from that experience of prayer is that God takes our prayers and he changes them. And sometimes he may not necessarily change the prayer, but he may change us. And so in my instance, it wasn't that he changed my prayer, but he changed my heart. Um, so two things that I want us to learn from that point. The first thing is that God cannot change what we don't give to him. God cannot change what we don't present to him. And a lot of the times we want to come to God as churchified people, who have a lot of struggles and a lot of things that we're dealing with. And we don't want to show ourselves to God. We want to hide those pieces of ourselves from God. Because maybe we are ashamed of who we are. Maybe we are ashamed of our struggles and the places where we have fallen short. But God can't change those parts of our lives unless we present them to him. And so in presenting my life to God, in presenting this broken piece of me, in presenting this part of me that, that was upset and disappointed, I realized that God began to shape my character and my heart. And so instead of praying out of, out of frustration, out of anger, that God, out of resignation, that God, this is your life, just do what you want to do with it, my prayer became, became one of surrender, where I was saying, Lord, I don't know what to do. I need you to take control of my life. And God wants us to surrender. And the more I, I, I prayed this prayer, I realized that even when people would ask me, because you know people, people ask these questions. People can be nosy. They'll ask you, so what's next, <laughs> you know? So what's your plan? You know, what are you doing with your life? People want to know these things. And initially my answer was, I don't know. But the more I, I prayed this prayer to God, the more I realized that my answer became, I'm waiting on the Lord. And now you may think this is a strange response to give or or, or a response of someone who has no plan. But yes, I did not have a plan. <laughs> but in my surrender to God, I realized that my plan was God. My plan was placing my life in his hands and saying, Lord, I will be faithful in the places that I need to be faithful in. I will be faithful if it means I'm working in whatever area I'm in, I will do my best to be faithful in that area, wherever you place me. And what tomorrow holds, I'm not sure. I don't have a long time plan of after 10 years, I'm going to do this, but God, I will walk and I'll go where you say I should go. And so that was my plan. I just said, Lord, I'm placing my life in your hands. And as much as this, this placing my life in God's hands was, was okay, Lord, I'm placing my life in your hands, do as you will. Um, I realized that it did not take away some of the fears that I had. And sometimes we, 
we have so many fears in our hearts that that when we don't pray, God can't do anything about them. But in my prayer and saying, Lord, I don't know what's happening tomorrow. I also learned to tell God that, God, I'm scared. God, I'm afraid of what tomorrow holds. God, I don't know what's next. And that fills me with so much fear. And when we do that, God is in a position to answer our prayer. Now, this I learned a few years back. I learned that God sometimes gives an answer while we wait for the real answer, right? So usually we pray and we say, Lord, I'm waiting for a yes, I'm waiting for a no. And sometimes God delays in giving these answers. Sometimes we can be so disappointed, disappointed and so discouraged because we are waiting for a specific answer. But I don't know about you, but I realize that God gives us an answer as we wait for the answer. Now I want us to go to Philippians chapter 4, verse 6 to 7. Philippians chapter 4, verse 6 to 7. And it says, be careful for nothing, but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your requests be known to God. And so first, we need to let our requests be known to God in everything. So when we let our, our requests known to God, God now knows, okay, Nunti is experiencing anxiety about this. She doesn't know what next. She doesn't know where she's going to next. And then he can act. And then verse seven says, and the peace of God which passeth all understanding shall keep your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. And so we let our requests know to God. And the moment we tell him what we need, guess what he sends to us? He sends peace. Say, and so Lord, I don't have a plan for tomorrow, but Lord, please, please guide me. Please lead me. And God sends peace. And this peace is a peace that passeth all understanding. This peace is a peace that, that even if you try to explain it, it does not make sense. Because no matter how much you try to talk about it, no one's going to understand it. Because it's just you and God. It's a peace that passeth all understanding. And this is a God that we serve who, who sometimes when we're waiting for an answer in our lives, he sends peace just so that you can get through the moment that you are in. And so this is an encouragement to us today that as we wait for God, as we surrender our lives to God, as we surrender our, our situations, our anxieties, our joys, our pains, our, our hopes and our dreams to God, he will send peace so that as we wait for those things to come to flourishing, we can enjoy a peace that comes from God. Now in the book of Job, Job chapter 22, verse 21, and it says, acquaint now thy, thyself with him and be at peace, thereby good shall come unto thee. So acquaint yourself with God, acquaint yourself with God and be at peace. So when we get to know God more, as we experience our walk with God, now, I'm, I'm, I'm talking more about prayer, but I'm assuming that prayer is not coming alone. Prayer is coming with the study of his word. And so as we acquaint ourselves with God, as we study his word, as we place our petitions before his feet, we experience a peace that passeth all understanding. And the second part of the verse says, thereby good shall come unto thee. Good shall come unto thee. Reminds me of, 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 of Psalms, the chapter 23, it talks about how, how our cups runneth over because we are in his presence, because we are at his, at his table, because we are dining with him. And that's the experience that we have as we go through this life with God. Let us acquaint ourselves with him. Um, let, us, let us surrender. And in our surrender, let us experience the peace that he wants to give to us. Now, I, I learned something very difficult as I, 
as I have gone through my, my journey of prayer, I, I learned that prayer means submission. Now, for a lot of women, especially in today's world, submission is not a nice word to hear. We hear submission, we think, oh, no, <laughs> I must now. Equal rights come into play, all sorts of different things. And, and a lot of women don't like to hear this word submission. But the Bible tells us that we should submit, right? It says submit to one another. And then it says submit to God as well. And today I want to focus on the submission element to God. Prayer means submission. Now, a few years back, I was praying about something and I was saying, Lord, I, I need this. Please come through for me. I'm waiting on this from you. Now, what I didn't realize was that in my prayer for that, I was submitting myself to whatever answer that God would give. Now, sometimes we... We pray with the expectation that God is going to answer us in a particular way. But God doesn't do that a lot of the times. A lot of the times when we pray, we need to realize that in praying, in placing our submissions to God, in, pray, in placing our desires and our petitions before him, what we're doing is saying, Lord, should you decide to go ahead and give this to me? It's fine. Should you decide not to give it to me, it's fine. So when you, when you write a, an application letter to, for a job, you write and you place yourself at the mercy of the HR manager or, or the body of people that are making a decision on whether or not to hire you. You're placing yourself at the mercy of whatever decision that they make. And it's the same principle here. When we pray and we place our lives before God, we're placing ourselves at his mercy and saying, Lord, whatever decision it is that you make regarding my life, whatever decision it is that, that you make regarding this particular thing that I'm praying about, I'm submitting it to you and it's fine. And this is a tough tough realization that we need to go through. It's a tough answer that we need to experience. It's a tough situation that, that we need to go through and that we need to appreciate, I think, as we move forward in our prayers, as we move forward in our experiences and our walks with God. That when we pray, there is always the risk of being denied. When you ask for something, there is always a risk of being denied. And the truth is we fear denial. We fear it. It's scary. Um, there are times when, when I want to ask for something or, or I want to request for something like at work, there's something that I need for my department and I need to make a requisition for it. And the fear of rejection can stop a person from making a decision to just ask. Um, recently, I, I had to request for a rather pricey object for our department. And I had been wanting to ask for this thing for the past year. But the whole year, I was afraid. I was gripped by fear that they were just going to say no. But really, the worst thing that they could say was no. And then this year, I finally managed to place that requisition ahead, and it was approved, just like that. But my point is, the worst answer that you could get in a situation where you ask for something is a no. That is the worst request that you can get. That's the worst answer that you can get, sorry. But in a situation where we are leaning on God, where we are work, working with God, where we are trusting on God to, to answer our prayer, when we are trusting on a God who created the entire world, who, who created not just the entire world, but he, who created us in his wisdom, who, who placed trees that give fruit and very delicious fruit at that for us to eat, who placed vegetation upon the land, 
so that we could not go hungry. A God who, who gave us the skills to build shelter for ourselves. A God who, when Adam and Eve had sinned against him and they were looking for things to cover themselves, a God who went down and gave them something to clothe their bodies. A God who seeks us out even when we have failed him. That's the God that we are praying to. A God who cares for our every single desire, every single thing that we are going through, all our hurts and our pains, he cares about those things. That's the God that we are praying to. How can we fear denial? Because I think about Jesus when he was praying. Now, now, Jesus teaches the disciples to pray. The disciples come and they say, Lord, teach us how to pray. And in Matthew, we have a beautiful rendition about how Jesus teaches them to pray. And one of the things he says is, pray and say, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. That's the prayer that God, is, God wants to hear from us. That's the prayer that Jesus says, pray and say, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. It's a prayer of submission. A prayer that places you at his mercy. A prayer that says, even though I am praying for this particular thing in my life, Lord, not my will, but yours. So Jesus is in the garden of Gethsemane and he's praying. Let's take our Bibles to the book of Mark. Mark chapter 14, verse 36. And he's praying and Mark chapter 4, 14, verse says, 36, it says, and he said, Abba, Father. Now, Abba, we know that Abba is a term of endearment. So he's like saying, Daddy. He says, Abba, Father, all things are possible unto thee. Take away this cup from me. Nevertheless, not what I will, but what you will. And so Jesus, the epitome of of our, of our lives, the epitome of our Christian lives, the one whom we should follow after, places himself into the submission of God. Now I want us to read it in the book of Luke. Because I, I just want us to, to read how Luke puts it across. So it's Luke chapter 22, verse 42. And it says, okay, I'm going to start from, from verse 41, and it says, And he was withdrawn from them about a stone's cast, and he kneeled down and he prayed, saying, Father, if thou be willing, remove this cup from me. Nevertheless, not my will, but thine. Other versions talk about how he was, he was distressed. He was experiencing distress in that moment. And so Jesus experiences distress. And even in a moment where he was experiencing distress, he still managed to submit his will to the Father. And a lot of the times we are in distress. A lot of the times we, we come before God and we have so many things that we are struggling with. We have things that we want to achieve. Lord, I need that promotion at work. You know I need the extra income. Lord, I need to make good grades. Lord, I, there's so many things that we're asking God for. And our example, Jesus, who, even in this situation, and, and I want to say this because in this situation, it was not something that he was praying for, something that was, he was just saying, okay, Lord, please, I just need, okay, I'm, I'm going to think about back in Jesus' times, maybe it would have been a chariot that someone would have been praying for. He didn't pray for a chariot. He wasn't praying and saying, Lord, please, my chariot needs new wheels. What he was praying for was about the salvation of mankind. So you can imagine the weight that he was carrying on his shoulders. And, and, and the, in the scope of the things that we pray about today regarding our lives, regarding things that we want to achieve, regarding the, the different things that we are, we, are, we are hoping for in our lives, what Jesus was praying for was, was amazing. He was praying for you and me. And he hadn't done anything wrong. And yet he submitted himself to the Father. And this is what he's asking us to do. Because sometimes we think that 
prayer is about bending God. So the more I pray, the more God should, 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 should give me what I want. You know, if I pray morning, evening, afternoon, and, and then I, I fast five days, and then I just eat on two days, or maybe I do a partial fast because I really, really need this thing. Maybe, 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 just maybe, God will hear my prayer and he'll answer me. And a lot of the times, that's what our prayers are about. We are praying so that God can bend over and, and do what it is that we want. And yet we realize that prayer is not about bending God to our will. If at all anything, prayer is about seeking the will of God and aligning our desires to his will. Now, I mentioned this earlier on about how as I prayed when I was resigned and I was upset, I prayed and, and I realized that as the more I prayed, the more that God changed my heart and made me seek after what he wanted for my life. And this is the same principle. The more we pray, the more we, 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 we place our desires at his feet, the more he's in a position to change our hearts and make us more and more like Christ. So there's even more reason for us to align ourselves in the way that Christ has asked us to align ourselves in. There's even more reason for us that when we pray, our prayers are not prayers that are asking specifically for something because I just have to have this and if I don't have this, Ish, this relationship with me and Jesus, I'm not sure about it. But our prayers should be such that they draw us closer to him and they make us look more and more like Christ. Now, the last point that I want us to dwell on this evening is, is connected to my theme of the talk, living on a prayer. First Thessalonians 5 verse 17. It reads and it says, pray without ceasing. Pray without ceasing. Now, someone once described prayer, or at least the prayer life that a Christian should have, as the kind of prayer, as, as the kind of life where, where you cannot go a minute without taking a breath. So prayer should be like the air that you breathe. Pray without ceasing. Continue to pray, some versions say. My desire for us today is that we need to continue to pray in everything that we do. I used to wonder if it was possible to pray without ceasing. But I'd like to say that it is possible to pray without ceasing. It's possible to communicate with God without ceasing. Now, we, we have these gadgets, our phones. And all the times we're constantly on our phones, communicating. Those who have boyfriends and girlfriends, those newlyweds, they're constantly communicating. Constantly, hi, how are you? How's your day? Are you okay? You know, did you sleep well? Constantly communicating. This world is a world of communication where we are constantly talking to each other, but we are not talking to God. And our key text said, be still and know that I am God. Our key text said, step out of traffic, take a long, loving look at me. That's what God wants us to do. And my desire for us moving on, that we, we take these principles. Now, the first principle that we learned was that prayer is talking with God. We also learned that prayer is about surrendering. We need to surrender to God, surrender our every part of our lives, surrender the hurts, surrender the joy, surrender every single thing about our lives. But in surrender, we must remember that surrender means submission. And we can submit to no other better person other than Jesus because he's a God who who has provided for every needs. We go into the Bible and we learn about how he clothes the flowers with, with they're, they're more beautifully dressed than King Solomon ever was dressed. That he feeds the birds of the air. That's the God that we serve. So when we submit, we submit with no fear because we know that this is a God who's going to answer our prayers. We know that it's a father who's going to come through 
whatever troubles and 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 confusions we may have he's a father who gives peace when we are waiting on the answer that he's going to give us first he gives peace because he wants us to have peace of mind that's the father that we have that's the father that we have a father who wants to constantly be communicating with us a father who wants to constantly be hearing about every single thing that's happening in your life who wants to be the first one that you call when things don't go well who wants to be the first one you call when something exciting happens in your life he wants us to live on a prayer he wants us to live our lives such that as we move forward we become more and more like him because the relationship that we are experiencing between us and him is changing us to make us look more and more like him. And so the things I want us to pray about this evening as we go into a season of prayer. Number one, I want us to pray that God gives us a spirit of surrender. Uh, a musician once wrote a song and it says, take me out of the shallow waters where I can stand on my own. Carry me over the deepest valleys where I will trust in you alone. If holding you is a weakness, don't let me be so strong. And that's what I want us to pray today, that, that we learn to surrender and place ourselves under God's protection. So prayer request one is, Lord, help us to surrender. Number two is, Lord, help us to submit to your plans for our lives. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. When I was, when I was younger and I was in high school, we would go for assembly. And during assembly, we would pray the Lord's Prayer as a student body. And there were times when, when we would get to that part in the prayer, and I would just be quiet because I was scared of what it meant. So my prayer for us today is that we come to a point where we don't fear the will of God in our lives because God is a God who, he's, he asks and he says, which father who when their son asks for a loaf of bread gives them a serpent? That's the father that we have who just wants to give us good things. So my prayer or the prayer request that I have for you, the second one is, Lord, help us to submit to your will in our lives. Help us to not fear the things that you wish for our lives. Help us to align our desires to your will. And the final one is for a closer walk with God a walk where we pray without ceasing, a walk where we constantly are communicating with a God who seeks us out from the beginning. And so this evening, I'm going to ask Brian to pray for us and Robert and Brenda in that order. Thank you. Thank you so much for that nice share. I don't know if, if there are any prayer requests before I pray. I didn't see any in the in the in the chat. Doris, are there any prayer requests? No, there are no more prayer requests sent right now. I but we can always send our prayer requests. We will share them even as we proceed. And uh, just to clarify, um, Nompi, you meant Brenda. Which Brenda? Um, the name I was given was, so I'm not sure which Brenda. Pardon? I was just given the name Brenda, so I'm not sure which one. Oh, there's oh. someone here named, okay. Uh, okay. I can't see Brenda. Though Brenda Lumumba is here with me, so she can pray. Okay, I can see. <coughs> okay, I've, I've received a private prayer request from from Cindy, so I'll, I'll put her in prayer. 
Brian, mute your background or reduce your volume. Yes. Okay, okay. Let me just rectify that then. Let me pray. Uh, okay, then um, shall we bow our heads for a word of prayer? Kind and loving Master, we thank you for this day. We thank you for the fact that you've allowed us to see it, dear Lord. We thank you for everything that you've done unto us in our lives, dear Lord. And we thank you for the opportunity to come to your presence, to thank you and adore you and praise you this day, Father. Father in heaven, we also thank you for the opportunity for allowing us to meet in this virtual platform just to thank you and praise you, dear Lord. We don't take it for granted, oh Father. And we just want to come to your presence and say thank you, dear Lord. Mm -hmm. Father in heaven, we thank you also for the opportunity to have a prayer and fasting day like this one that we had today. Father in heaven, it's not by chance that you allowed us to do this, but it is because you saw it fit and you planned it that we can meet today and have a prayer and fasting session, dear Lord. We don't take it for granted, oh Father. Father in heaven, we have our various brethren here, who have various prayer requests, dear Lord. We have our sister Cindy together with our brother Jacob, and the other one that I didn't see, dear Lord, Father. And for everyone else that may have forwarded their prayer requests, or may not have forwarded theirs, Father, due to maybe one reason or the other, dear Lord including those who may be suffering in silence, dear Lord. May they find that balm of Gilead, dear Lord, that soothes and heals both this physical body and the spirit, dear Lord. May all their prayers be answered according to their riches in glory, dear Lord. And may your name be glorified in every single aspect of our lives, dear Lord. Father in heaven, in all our endeavors, we humbly request you to guide us and protect us in everything and in anything that we may do that may not be in glorification of your name, dear Lord. We humbly request you to forgive us, O oh Father. Guide and protect us through it all, dear Lord. But most importantly, I also request you, dear Lord, to prepare us not only for this world, but also for the world above. For it is my humble prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. Together with what my brothers prayed, our Father in heaven, in the name of Jesus Christ, we pray this evening. Grateful that, Father, you've been with us. Grateful that, Father, you provided for us. Not because we deserve it, but because, God, you have your grace. There are so many people we know and we don't know who today are not around because they already slept, Father. But because of your grace, because of your mercies, we are alive, Father. We are healthy, even though some of us are praying that, God, you touch them and heal them. Like Jacob praying for that, God, you can heal the Father. We have another brother who has a prayer request also for they are not, not feeling well. God, we thank you that tonight you've spoken to us through our sister, that all the time, let's endeavor to let your will be done in our lives. Let's endeavor to let your will be done in our prayers. That God, you already know what is good for all of us. Tonight, once again, we want to apologize that God, for, for many, many years, many times, we pray and Hope that you can bend and uh, take our will instead of your will, Father. Father, teach us not to be disappointed when you say no to us because you already know what is good for us. In a special way, Father, I know each and every one of us represents a group, a family, that God, you call your children this evening. How I pray that as they stand here representing those groups, families, that God, you will work a miracle in their lives. 
that God, you meet each and every one of them at their points of need, and that God, above all, that your will be done in all of, all of our lives. Tonight, we want to pray and allow you, the Holy Spirit, to make a home in our hearts. That God, going forward, not only will people see what we do that will identify us as your children, but also what we say, Father. Be with us and we continue praying for people who are traveling, those who are sick in hospitals at homes, those who don't have food, those who have all the afflictions that the devil has put on us, that God, you can take care of them. For we pray, believing in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. 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 Let's believe and pray. Dear Jesus, we pause at your throne a little longer, thanking you so much for the day that has been, thanking you so much for the prayers you have answered. All through the day, we've made several requests to you, both individually, in groups. And dear Jesus, you have also listened to our hearts and you know the desires of our hearts. But as we, even as we have heard today, not our will, but thine, that you may teach us how to submit, that it may not be a burden for us to allow you to do your will in our lives, that you may help us and teach us how to surrender, dear Jesus, that at the end of it all, may we be able to say that it was your will and that it has worked well for us, Heavenly Father. And dear Jesus, even as we continue with this prayer session, may, they, may this be our lifestyle. May we live by a prayer. May we uh, be able to learn how to communicate, to communicate with you in each and every aspect of our lives. Let it not just stop today, but let it be something that is constant, the only constant in our life. Thank you so much for uh, the people that are represented here. Thank you for the families. In a special way, we pray for Franklin. And even as he, he requests that, dear Jesus, you may help him build his spiritual prayer and show him his way forward and his destination. He's not the only one with the same request. But dear Jesus, I pray that even as you um, meet him at this point of need, you may meet all those who have the similar request to his, that you may also help them to grow, help each and every one of us to grow spiritually and help each and every one of us to grow to your throne. We thank you so much for the answered prayers. We thank you so much for your will. And dear Jesus, above all, may we continue to, may you continue to prepare us for your second return and help us also to do our very best to prepare others for the same. Keep us now in this night and even to the very end, for it's my humble and sincere prayer. In Jesus' name, I humbly do pray. Amen. 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 Thank you so much, Nompi. Um, thank you, thank you, Nompi, for the sharing. As we continue, I'd like to welcome, I'd like to welcome Holly for one special, like one closing item. Even as she gives us this item, we can still send our requests on the chat. You can chat me privately. We will pray at the end for the requests that will be sent. Yeah, Holly, you are welcome for another item. Thank you. May you all be blessed with the item.
someone is praying for you. So when it seems you're all alone and your heart will break into remember someone is praying for you. And you gathered in the midst of the storm Is your ship tossed and battered? Are you weary and worn? Don't lose hope, someone's praying for you this very day And please be still is already on the way. Someone is praying for you. Someone is praying for you. to remember someone that's praying for you. Oh. 
Amen. Someone is truly praying for you. I'd like to request Nopi to give us a closing prayer. And um, Nopi, as you pray, please remember Tendai's father-in-law, whose, uh, whose condition, health condition is deteriorating after suffering a stroke in 2015. And uh, remember all of us that may the Lord um, bless us for yeah, may the Lord bless us and help us even as we continue with the sessions that are remaining for this week. Yeah. To, uh, oh, sorry, please let me not forget. I have realized that you Nompi didn't work alone for the family members who came to be with us. Even as uh, Nompi was speaking with us, we have recognized your presence and thank you so much for being with us. And you're welcome for the rest of the session. Yeah, Nomfi, you're welcome. Okay, let us pray. Heavenly Father, we come before your throne this evening. Lord, we are so grateful for the lessons and the gems that you have taught us. Lord, we thank you because you have shown us the way that we should go, Lord, and you continue to teach us so that we may become better and better and continue to grow in goodness, that we continue to look more and more like Christ in our walk with you. Lord, we pray in a special way for all the prayer requests that have been brought before your throne. Lord, you've heard each and every single one of them, and Lord, you hold each and every single person who has brought them before you dearly in your heart. And because of that, we know that whatever the outcome is, Lord, it is only for our good. Lord, you said in your word that all things work together for good for those who love the Lord and are called according to your purpose. And Lord, it is with that confidence that we can come before your throne and place our petitions before you, knowing full well that as we are called by you according to your purpose, Lord, and as we believe and trust in you, that everything that happens in our lives will work for good. Lord, we'd like to remember in a special way Tendai's father-in-law, who is not well, Lord, you know the pains that he's experiencing. Lord, you know everything that he's going through. And we place him in your hands, Lord, and we ask for healing in his life. We ask for um, transformation from the struggle that he's going through, that you may come through for him, Lord, in a special way. But Lord, we don't just want to pray for him, but we also want to remember his family members that are around him that are with him, Lord, we pray that you may continue to give them strength, that they may not lose hope, that they may not lose faith in you, in everything that goes on around them, Lord, that they may continue to hold on to you and trust in you for healing. Lord, we pray for everyone who was able to make it to this evening's meetings, Lord, and those who are not able to, those who were distracted by something, Lord, we pray for them as well, and we pray that you may be with them, that you may protect that you may provide for their needs and lord we pray in a special way lord that their experience may be one that leads them to you their experience may be one that readies them for your soon coming lord and we see that your coming is even nearer than it was before when we first believed and we look forward to your second coming and we ask you lord that you may come even so even amidst all these trials and tribulations lord we ask for your second coming to be even sooner than before. Lord, we'd also like to pray for the rest of the uh, meetings and sessions that are going to happen throughout the rest of the week. Lord, we pray that you continue to speak to us, that you continue to change our hearts and continue to mold us so that we become more and more like you. In your holy name we pray. Amen.